Hi, hello, and welcome to everyone out there. This is Andrew from MAO Magic doing an in-depth review on the Ecobee 4 Smart Thermostat. We absolutely covered the Ecobee 3 in the past, covering all of its great features and why it's a fantastic home kit smart thermostat for your house. And now Ecobee is added again with some great new changes. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what is in the box, what you're actually going to get, a basic how-to on installing the thermostat, whether you can do it yourself or if you need to hire a pro, we're gonna look at the new features, setting it up, and other processes in the app itself, and then some of the really cool things you can do with smart home and other accessories on top. So when you open it up, you will see two things right off the bat, the actual Ecobee 4 thermostat and a little sensor. This comes with one sensor that you can add many, many more to your house, and those are gonna help keep tabs of you when you're going around the house to know which room you're in and to keep adjusting the temperature. On the bottom, you'll find the actual mounting plate, a little kickstand for the sensor itself, a alternative power wire, and just some mounting screws that you may need if you do not or if you need to install this uh, differently than your last thermostat. If we compare this to the Ecobee 3, which we had installed, there are differences to the back plate, which is definitely a bummer if you're planning on upgrading. There are some slight changes. The hole in the center is just a little bit smaller, and the bracket is overall a different shape. Here is mine installed, and even here it wasn't actually correct. I needed to move my RH to the RC slot, which was different than the last generation. But since I did have that C wire, I did not need to worry about any additional power. So I didn't need that little power adapter that they also sent with it. So let's look at the actual unit itself and see what's uh, up here. Now it is a little bit rounder than the last generation, a little bit more curved, and it's definitely thicker. On the back, there is a speaker because one of the biggest new features is, of course, Alexa being built in. So there's tons of things going on. There are microphones, there are present sensors, there are speakers, there are things to cool. And of course, that back has all those clips to plug into that mounting plate that went on the wall. Now, if you don't use that mounting plate, you can also, if it's not big enough to cover any holes that may be there, there is another one that is a little bit larger that goes with it to cover up any holes that may have been left from your last thermostat. So if we compare it again to the Ecobee 3, we have the Ecobee 4 on the left and the 3 on the right. The last generation, definitely a little bit more square, overall just a little bit smaller. There's just a slight size increase to the newer generation, both on the actual screen and the size of the unit itself. The really big difference though is of course, the ability of Alexa. You can see that light bar on the bottom there on the Ecobee 4, and of course there is no light bar on the last generation. There's also no speaker or anything else. Sensors are the same as they were before. You can add several of these throughout your home and they do a different, uh, few different things. This identifies which room you are in the house, which room you're in, and it'll make sure that that room is adjusted to the temperature that you're looking for. They can also, when you're added to HomeKit, they can also be a motion sensor in HomeKit and a temperature sensor in HomeKit. So you can put these upstairs in a hallway or something and it'll trigger whenever you walk through the hallway and you can turn on your hallway lights using that HomeKit automation. So there are other features outside of just using it for the Ecobee that these sensors are really, really great for. And you can have several, it comes with one, but you can just pick up some additional ones if you'd like. So we've got our sensor all good to go. We've got our back plate installed. We're just going to clip on the Ecobee and we're good to go. It will boot up and say hi. You'll see a little B walking around the screen. Then it'll guide you through the setup process. The setup process is super, super easy to do. They walk you through everything. They identify the wires that you've already plugged in. You, they walk you through stuff in the app or they make you take picture things. You have to know very little about your actual unit to set this up. I am in an apartment or a townhome and I only knew the basics of our heating and cooling system, but I still was able to go through this perfectly fine. They make recommendations for you and identify what they can. I think most people should easily be able to install this themselves. Once we move over to the app, they do a few other things like connecting it to your Wi-Fi, uh, setting up home IQ based on the actual stats and size of your home, and then we get into signing up for Alexa. That's right, you can use this similar to an Echo device that you may already have in your home. It's worth noting, I do have an Echo B3 that we had installed before that I removed for this review. So throughout all this, you're gonna see two Ecobees here and in the HomeKip app. Uh, it's because I have that old one there. And so the other one's gonna be offline during this, but the new one obviously will be working uh, perfectly fine. So if you see two going on and one offline, that is why. 
So the interface is actually very, very similar to the old Ecobee. Bottom left hand corner pulls up a lot of the main menu stuff. So the system, what um, what system you're on, heating or cooling or auto, uh, the extra sensors you have, comfort settings, uh, vacation controls, reminders and alerts, literally pretty much everything you can do in the app you can do very much here on the thermostat itself. It's kind of cool because the interface of the thermostat pretty much mirrors what you would see in the app. They do take your uh, current location, you can put your address in, it'll pull up the local weather, and that weather will also help the thermostat be smart in doing things based on the weather outside. You have the quick changes to change different modes, and that bottom right corner is new, and that is the Alexa controls. You can adjust, adjust the volume on top, turn the microphone on and off, and push to talk if for some reason it isn't registering your voice. Just like the last generation, this does work with Apple's HomeKit. It is super easy to add to HomeKit. I just jumped into the HomeKit application and hit add, and it immediately saw the HomeKit uh, thermostat showing up. I was able just to tap on add and scan the HomeKit code that automatically showed up on the screen. Once I scan that secure code, it will pair it to your HomeKit account. You then can actually see, this is the default room downstairs where the thermostat is. It'll show uh, the name, which you can rename anything you want. So I renamed it the Ecobee 4. I can choose the location of the different rooms in HomeKit, and I can opt to include it in favorites. Now there are different accessories that show up. For instance, we actually have a thermostat accessory, which is what we're seeing here, and we have a motion accessory. So this uh, thermostat and the motion detector are going to do those two separate things inside of HomeKit. So we can do triggers and rules and other automation things based on those two different accessories that show up. Even though the Ecobee is one unit, two, uh, two different things show up, and two more will show up if I add that remote sensor. So I can actually have the remote sensor in different rooms here inside of HomeKit. So here on HomeKit, I can see I have the temperature. I can adjust the temperature up and down. I can tap and mode in that bottom left-hand corner, go from auto, cool, heat, or off altogether. And we do have the motion sensor. I can do different automation and tricks with the motion sensor as well, tying to other things like you know lights or other accessories that I may have connected to HomeKit. And because it is HomeKit, you can use Siri. So I can actually just tell Siri wherever I am, home or away, to set the temperature to 74 degrees and set the downstairs to 74. Now notice where it says the thermostat is not responding. That's because I still have the Ecobee 3 in here, which is currently unplugged. So the Ecobee 4 worked, but the 3 is not available. So let's look at the automation that HomeKit affords us. If I scroll all the way to the bottom of this list, I have all these other rules that were already set up, but I'm gonna create new automation. So I can do different things based on the motion sensor. So if I tap on sensor automation, tap the Ecobee 4 motion sensor, I can just enable a scene. So I can create a scene and have that just run. Or I could choose a specific accessory and have it do certain things. So I want the concentrate, which is a light scene. So I want the lights in my living room to turn on to concentrate after sunset when it detects motion in my main room. So any of those work with many other HomeKit accessories that you may have. But notice there is not anything to do based on certain temperatures. You can use a third party app like the Eve or the other home app that we've reviewed and do things like if the temperature gets to 74 degrees, turn on a fan that I have plugged into a HomeKit outlet. So you can do that accessory automation using other third party apps. Apple's HomeKit app is fantastic, but it's not always the best one. You can also do things based on location, really easy in here. When I get home, turn the uh, temperature to a certain degree. When I leave, set it to something else. The time is 10.47 p.m. Here's your flash briefing in NPR News from TuneIn. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Jack Spear. So if you're unfamiliar with Alexa, there are tons of different things you can do. So why don't we take a look at setting it up, what skills it can learn and do, and how it can help you in your home. So we've already authenticated it when we did the setup process by signing into Amazon. But in the Alexa app is where you can really take control. You can view all your past queries to Alexa. You can choose any music services you'd like to tie in. Here are your lists. So if you would ask Alexa to add something to a shopping list or to a reminder list or a to-do list, those lists can appear here. We have different timers and alarms. So if you're cooking uh, or need to wake up, you can all set those through Alexa and have her wake you up. But skills are really cool. You can actually add third-party skills to Alexa. So things from other smart home automators like Elay and KuGeek or Philips Hue, which is what all would show up here in the smart home app. But there is lots of other skills, so definitely play with around with those uh, with Alexa. Any smart home uh, items that you have will show up here under smart home. 
So I have the Philips Hue, but could also work with Kugeek or Yeelight or iDevices. Any of those will show up here and allow you to group them into zones, set scenes, and everything else. Of course, then you can ask Echo or Alexa to do them. Here we have things to try. This is just a cool list of stuff, so like discovering music, enabling skills, fun games, and other random stuff. Now, if you have a smart thermostat, you might probably be interested in smart home things. And that's where some of the stuff gets really cool because you can tie it all in and just use your voice through this one speaker and, of course, any other Alexa speakers that are out there. Now, things like iDevices, this is one that works with uh, Amazon Alexa as well as HomeKit, so both of them here. This is a smart outlet, but they also have wall switches, uh, light bulb sockets, and many others because it connects over Wi-Fi and then just ties into Alexa, making it really easy to control anything plugged into this outlet. We also have a whole line of things from KuGeek, which has like this smart light switch, this smart socket, and this smart plug. So many different things from lights to anything you would plug into an outlet, it could be a fan, humidifier, purifier, or even anything plugged into a light switch, or not plugged into, but connected to a light switch, like built-in ceiling lights. Just installing this special switch will work with HomeKit and Siri, as well as your Echo or Alexa device. Now, these will not be released till this fall, but this is even cooler to go along with the Echo B4, which are these smart light switches. They have built-in Alexa speakers into them, motion sensors, and everything else that the Ecobee does. So this will tell uh, the Ecobee if you're in that room and allow you to talk to Alexa and do everything else that you can do through an Echo speaker, but through your light switch. So even cooler, and we should see these those coming out uh, later this year. So that pretty much wraps it up. The Ecobee 4 is a beast of a thermostat, working with several different home automation platforms between HomeKit, uh, Amazon Echo, Alexa, as well as smart things. Pretty much the only difference though between the Ecobee 3 and the Ecobee 4 is the ability of Alexa and those far field technology microphones that allow you to talk to it pretty much anywhere within the room. If you'd like to pick one up, there's a link below in the description. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Otherwise, subscribe to keep us going. Till next time, it's Andrew for MAO Magic.